Welcome to Podcast TV. I'm your host, Chris Templeton, and I'm really pleased to be here with Allie Thompson from Waggity Tales, T A L E S, as in Tell Me a Tale. Um, and I am so impressed with what you're doing in, in, from a variety of different perspectives. But let's just start with a quick overview of what Waggity Tales is. Um, yeah, so at Waggity Tales, um, primarily what we do is customize books for dogs. And so they are books that dogs can understand. They were inspired by Biscuit. And, um, Hi, Biscuit. <laughs> um, Biscuit um, is also the name of a character in a popular children's book series of a do about a dog. And so I thought it would be fun when he was a puppy, I got in this book called Biscuit, and I would read it to him, and he just loved it. And you can kind of see the wear of how much he loved it. <laughs> yep. I thought, I, I got some other books in the series as well, and he was not as into those. He really just liked this original Biscuit book. Really? I realized that it's because it says his name at least once, often twice, on every page, <laughs> and the rest of the words are mostly words he knows. So... I was reading him this book and he could understand what I was saying. And I thought that would be really cool if other dogs, besides just ones that are already popular literary characters, could understand books um, as well. And so um, I created them. And because this one had gotten some wear and tear, I wanted them to be uh, a little more durable, a little bit more able to withstand some of the love that a dog would give. So I created... These um, are on fabric, and so they're all printed um, to be able to withstand a little bit more of that gentle play from dogs. Right. Oh, how cool. So all of the, the books are all filled in with your dog's name and words that you select that your dog knows. The form on your website is really straightforward, and it makes it really clear But that, you know, the types of words that you're going to put in, including the dog's name. But talk about the story a little bit. What's the story uh, in, in this book that you create? We actually have four different options for stories. There's one that's just kind of a basic day in the life, great for any time story. Um, and so that just has a lot of words about things your dog likes and tricks that they know and people or other pets that they would be familiar with their names, that kind of thing. Um, we also have a Christmas um, option. And so this one is all about um, presents that they get. For Christmas so lots of fun words that they would they'll get excited about um, and you'll note this one has a photo on the front right. we do have um, an option to include your own photos or illustration so um, and then we have a birthday one and the birthday one um, is really fun that one is about your dog's birthday party and all the friends that come and what they eat there and a couple presents that they get as well so a really fun birthday book and then um, we also have a gotcha day book, which I don't have a sample of right here. But in your gotcha day book, that one's a little bit different. You're not just um, choosing words that will fill into a story. In that one, we have kind of writing prompts for each page. And you tell the story of when you met your dog and um, when they rescued you. <laughs> and so um, it's a really fun way to kind of memorialize that story of meeting your dog. Um, that one, the, the dog might not understand quite as much because you're probably gonna use some words that they're not fam familiar with, but um, it's just a great way. And, and what dog doesn't love hearing the story of when you first met? <laughs> so and Hearing their names and, and the names of family members, that sort of thing. Right, yes. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so they really do engage with this, don't they? They really do. Um, and it, you know, it's funny, when I made my first prototype, um, I have another dog whose name is Peanut. And so I had filled in her name into the story. And I was, I was reading it just to myself, just to make sure the grammar and everything was good. And I was just kind of whispering, and she wasn't even in the room. And I was just kind of whispering, like, Peanut likes treats, you know, just barely saying it. And she came into the room and sat at my feet, and she was like, you're talking about me. You're saying words I know. And so I was like, okay, I'm on to something here because it wasn't just Biscuit with this original children's book. Right. Peanut was also engaging when it was her name in there. That is fascinating. I just, I don't think I would have ever thought about it. 
there's another thing that I never would have thought about, and that is for practicing literacy for kids. Talk a little bit about that part of this whole experience. Yeah, um, so actually a lot of schools and libraries have programs where um, people will bring in therapy dogs and kids can read to them. And it's a great way for kids to practice reading because they, um, the dogs don't judge them if they miss pronounce a word or they skip a word or however if they read it wrong a dog is just happy to sit there and get pets but this takes it a step further because now the dog is not just sitting there kind of happy to be there but not really engaged now the dog can actually understand and engage with what the child is reading right it is actually getting that feedback of like, hey, what I'm reading is exciting someone else and someone who's cute and someone who I love. So it's a great way for kids to practice reading. And chances are the words that you choose that your dog understands are usually pretty simple words. So it'll be an easy book for beginning readers. To right. Oh, my God. I just I never would have crossed my mind until I look at, looked at your website and it's like, oh, that is a great way to encourage a young reader and to have confidence. The no judgment piece is, is really huge, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, for, for humans, even if you are trying not to be judgmental, right. sometimes it's hard not to make a face when a kid mispronounces a word or something like that. So this is a great, you know, dogs, they're happy to just um, hear the words that they know. So uh, tell me how long you've been doing this now. Um, so I started in 2017. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years, and um, the people who have bought books that I've heard back from have um, just, you know, told me how much their dogs love them. Um, I've seen videos of dogs, you know, putting their heads down on the books or pawing at them um, and just, you know, tilting their heads, wagging their tails, just so excited to hear their books. So it's been really cool to see dogs' responses to it. And they are all machine washable, too. So if your dog's paw is muddy when they paw at it or get some slobber on it, you can just throw it right in the wash. I love that. It's something that I, I think of it as being almost the opposite of when we're raising kids saying, don't touch. It's like, paw it. Yeah. If you got dirty paws, don't worry about it. You're going to, we, we can clean it easily. And it ends up being um, a great thing for kids and, and dogs and pet owners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In doing this for the last couple of years, talk a little bit about what surprised you. Like, I'm sure you had a good idea of what you were headed toward, but what are some of the things you've just been, I never would have guessed that. Well, one of my first customers, um, she wrote to me after she placed the order. Um, she sent me an email and asked if she could get a Word document with the text of the book because she's blind. Mm. And she got the book for her seeing eye dog. And, um, but obviously, she couldn't read the pages of the book. So she wanted to have it um, digitally so that she could, the, her computer program could read it to her and she could memorize the book. And she wanted me to include the page numbers so that she knew, okay, page one says this, so she could memorize it and then turn the pages at the right point um, so that it was like she was reading the book to her dog. So I thought that was just really cool and um, wouldn't have expected necessarily that um, a, a blind person would be getting a book to read. They're not offered in Braille. Um, but right. um, yeah, it was really cool to just hear her, her story, so. <laughs> Uh, when you look at the kind of responses that you've got, what else has been just amazing to you, like that you didn't expect? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily that I didn't expect it, but I think um, just every time I see a new picture or video of a dog really engaged with their book, um, you know, with that, that, that head tilt, ears up kind of um, look on their face, looking at their owner, um, it's, you know, it's what I hoped for. So I, I don't want to say it was unexpected, right. but it, um, def it's definitely rewarding to see that it's not just Biscuit and Peanut who enjoy these books, but a lot of dogs do get them. I just, um, this weekend received some pictures from, um, our very first customer. Our Gotcha Day book is a, is a new, um, option. And so our very first Gotcha Day book customer, 
um, received her book and just the look on her face and the look on her dog's face. It's on our Facebook page. We just posted it yesterday. So you can see um, just how much the dog was excited to hear her um, adoption story. story. I just think that's the coolest thing. You know, um, when you look at this and see how consistent the response has been from people that have purchased these books, doesn't it just make you realize how much smarter these animals are than we give them credit for? Yeah, well, actually, in starting Waggity Tales, I, I started doing a lot of research into canine intelligence and specifically related to their linguistic abilities. And what was interesting is um, I found out that um, while an exact number is hard to for scientists to agree upon, the general um, estimate is that the average dog knows 200 to 400 words. I say lay down. Biscuit lays down. You lay down. Good boy, Biscuit. I love Biscuit because Biscuit is handsome. Good boy, Biscuit. I love Biscuit and Biscuit loves me. Good boy, Biscuit. Good boy. Yeah, there you go. What a good boy. No kidding. Which is actually equivalent to the uh, language ability of a human toddler. So that's pretty amazing to me. And I think that most people, if you were to say, how many words do you think your dog knows? They might say, oh, 15, 20. It'd be way under that 200 to 400 mark. Um, but it was interesting to read about, um, you know, we probably are thinking about the words they know because we taught them sit and stay and lay down, those kinds of things. But um, a lot of the language they pick up is just from listening to us without us ever making an effort. Um, so, you know, nobody teaches their word, their dog the word vet. Right. But how many <laughs> dogs know where they're going when you say vet? Absolutely. Um, you know, and, um, or if you have a home office and you often say to your spouse, hey, I'm going to go work in the office for a little bit. If your dog likes to be with you and usually follows you, then they learn, oh, office, that's that room there. And when she says office, we're going to go to that room there. So there's a lot of words that they know that we might not think of because we didn't teach it to them, but they're listening to us all the time and they want to understand us. So that 200 to 400, that's just your average mutt. There's definitely um, dogs that know more than that. Chaser was a very famous border collie who just passed away about a month ago. Um, but she knew over a thousand different words, primarily names for toys, which I'm impressed with largely for the owner because I don't think I could remember a thousand. Toys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let alone measure it. <laughs> But she knew over a thousand border collies um, are, you know, definitely up there for some of the best linguistic ability um, as dogs would go. Um, but yeah, it's just amazing and reading about how Chaser learned words um, that not only did she know, okay, if you hold up this toy and say, this is a pygmy or whatever you, you want to call it, um, that she would learn that after hearing it only two times, she would learn the name of that toy. Wow. Remarkable in and of itself. Huh. But she would also learn words by process of elimination. So if you had a pile of 10 toys and there were nine of them, that she already knew the name and one toy that was new, she'd never seen before. And you said, go get the, and you filled in a name that she had never heard before. She would get the new toy because she would know, well, it's not any of these because that's not what they're called. Um, so amazing uh, possibilities with dogs and the ability to learn language. Uh, what do you think that contributes to that special bond between dogs and humans? I, I mean, I, it's got to be a big piece of it, that understanding. Yeah, well, like I said, you know, they, they're always listening to us, and that's why they're learning words that we're not even teaching them. Mm -hmm. And so I think they want so badly to understand what we're saying. And they're trying to do that more and more all the time. And so that's why um, their vocabulary is as, as good as it is. Mm -hmm. And it, they're wanting that because they love us so much yeah. and because they, they want to be able to communicate with us. In fact, I have a theory, um, and I'm no scientist, but there are scientists who agree with me. I have a theory that dogs have the cognitive ability to speak human language. They just don't have the right vocal cords. 
Um, and this is backed by uh, a few different stories. One is uh, a dog named Sophia, whose owner had a mat that with different keys on it. And that when she would step on a key, it would say a word that she knew. And um, Sophia, when introduced to a new object, would step on the key that said the word um, that whatever that object fit into, you know, category wise. So that was pretty amazing. Um, and a fun story with that is uh, she was introduced to a new, um, I think it was a, a guinea pig or no, a hedgehog. And um, they thought she would step on the word toy. She stepped on the word food. So what's cool about that is the idea <laughs> of dogs, if we could create the technology that gave dogs the ability to speak, uh, we will learn a lot about how they're perceiving the world differently than we might imagine. Yeah. I, I'll um, bet you their favorite phrase would be, I love you. Yes. Don't I think you think? One more. Huh. Although, can I have a treat would probably be right up there. <laughs> Close second. Hey, you were recently at the Denver Pet Expo. Tell us a little bit about how that went and that experience. Um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of people. Um, who were very interested, you know, this is a really new concept. There's nothing else like it out there. Um, there are, you know, some books where you can customize with your pet's name or, or things like that, but it's really geared for the human. It's more of a memorabilia piece that, okay, I can have this as a memento of my pet. And this is really for the dog. This is so that you can read to them and they can understand it. And that um, is a really new concept. And people were really excited to hear about that. Um, they were really interested in that. And um, so I'm hoping that, you know, uh, since they're all customized, you couldn't actually buy a, a book there. Right. Um, I'm hoping that a lot of people will follow up and um, get a book for their dog. I know their dog will love it. Um, again, it will strengthen the bond as, as you talk to your dog and they're just loving uh, being able to understand what you're saying and if you've got young readers they're gonna they're gonna be uh have their own advantages to this too as well mm -hmm. uh ali thompson waggity tales you can be found at uh www.waggitytales.com where you can order your own customized book for your dog and to really help them to see how much you're engaged with them, right? Yes, exactly. It's a great thing to do. Um, also, you can be found on Facebook. How can people find you on Facebook? Um, it's just facebook.com slash waggity tales. T-A-L-E-S. Yeah. Very cool. Hey, thank you so much for this. It was great. Anything you want to wrap up with? Um, I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to talk about. So. Cool. Well, thank you so much. And I also just want to note, um, this is produced by PetEventProfessionals.com and let everybody know about a couple of upcoming events. First of all, September 21st is the Virginia Beach Pet Expo, and that's going to be held at the Virginia Beach Convention Center. You can find out more at VirginiaBeachPetExpo.com. Also, on Facebook, uh, Virginia Beach Pet Expo. And then on October 5th and 6th in Nebraska, the Nebraska Pet Expo at Cass County Fairgrounds. And that can you can find out more about that at NebraskaPetExpo.com and the same on Facebook. Allie Thompson, Waggity Tales. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you at, a new, at another event soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>